Okay, I'm going to start. Okay, I'm going to start recording. All right, this is Giovanni Diaz. This uh, I'm here with Oscar Carvajal. Carvajal, this is going to be one of my first episodes of The Wolf Den. We're over here. What bar is this? Kedzie Inn? The Kedzie Inn. Kedzie Inn, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we just did an open mic here with uh, Greg, Joey Lasso. How do you say the other guy's name? Uh, Bon Traeger. Bon Traeger. Bon Traeger. Bon Traeger. Bon Traeger here. So my Oscar's, Traeger, yeah. Oscar's one of my first guests here. Uh, when I started comedy, he was with the other only Mexican I remember. I don't know if you... Besides Joey, I mean open micers. You remember other Mexicans? I remember uh, me, open you. Open micers, uh, Mexicans? No, I don't think so. I mean, I mean, I guess if you count like Noah, but he oh was, yeah, he's yeah. only been doing his mic. No, nah, I, I don't remember. Uh, yeah, I remember when I started. You were the first one. You were actually at the first open mic I did. What was that? What was that? It was at the. Um, it was at that spot by Roscoe and Damon. It was the two Jeffs they used to run that. Oh, uh, like. three, uh, not three, did, uh, 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 four trays, right? Four, four trays, trays four yeah. Trays. You were at, I went up, like, I want to say, like, 20 of in the list. You went up, like, one of the first, like, five. First, like, five. First five or ten in the list, and then... Um, Do you remember what stuff you were d- talking about back then? I remember. Yeah. Uh, I was talking about, like, a lot of references to me being gay but not being <laughs> gay. <laughs> like, I remember Jeff McCree went up to me, like, so, like, are you gay or are you not? And I was like, it was a lot of these jokes, like... So I had a I, I had a Holocaust joke I used to do back then um, uh, about... Uh, the, the premise of the joke was that... Uh, I was like feeling sorry for the SS guards that they were the real victims. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's such a dumb joke, but oh, but you have another joke like that where you kind of like you look the the uh, assassins, the Mexican assassins. Okay, yeah. You look like oh man, uh, you look at, uh, at from the worker side, like yeah. oh, what, the assassin. Yeah, yeah. Was, I mean, yeah. yeah I, I guess I, I never thought about them being similar, but yeah, but yeah, the, the, this one was outrageous. Just being like saying like the SS guard was working long hours for very little pay <laughs> yeah. and stuff, shit like that. You know, it was stupid like that, and then uh, typical. That, I remember doing that. I remember Amy Shanker was in the audience. It was the first time that I ever saw her, and I remember her like laughing at that joke. So I like when I first started, like I I've, maybe I felt like like if certain says that I did when I started, like now I will consider them bombs. At that time, as long as like like one person was laughing, yeah, yeah. like that was good enough for to keep my self esteem going. And I remember, I remember specifically her laughing at that joke because like. Like I, I don't know who she was, but I, I remember her in that open mind. That's good. She's Jewish. She's Jewish. Yeah, you had a Jewish chick laugh at your joke. You know what I mean? Your house got jokes. That's good. I remember that. Like at Decibel, I remember like listening to my. I tried to listen to a set I did at Decibel. This mic it was on Broadway. I remember that one. And then I listened to that set, and I was like, maybe like a year or two ago, I listened to it, and I was like, oh my! I had to turn it off. But I remember in that moment when I listened to it that night, I get those few little laughs I got. I was like, oh man, I did good. But now it's like, man, that's. I'd be. Uh, yeah, well, that's, how, that's how it is when you because when you start like you don't like now. When I look at an audience, I see everyone or everyone that is visibly, you know, everyone like today I could see who's laughing, who's not. But when you first start doing stand up, you're looking down or you're not, you're not because you're so focused on remembering that you're not actually paying attention to everyone. So if you hear a laugh or two here, you just assume people are laughing, and reality is only two people out of like twenty that are laughing. But you still take it as a win when you first start, you know? It, it took me about a year or a year and a half to <laughs> realize to look at the audience. I never looked, I would never looked at the audience. I remember one time, I think I was at the first time I did Irish Eyes. And then for some reason, I just happened to look up and look in the audience and I did some joke. And I noticed somebody had a reaction and it changed how I said something. And I never, I was like, oh my God, look at, like little things like that. I, somebody who doesn't perform, like I didn't, you don't have a background. Did you have any background performing before stand up or no? No, I, um, no, I, uh, I rapped a little. No, not really rapped. Oh, you did? But, but like when English, I English, Spanish mix. English, but, but when I was younger, so I, I I got into like a few like you know like freestyle battles, mm-hmm. but never anything at the level of like having an actual audience. You know, like I like I like a, like a, with your buddies and stuff. Yeah, like in the, in the garage and shit with like 10, 15 people around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, I would freestyle battle with other people and stuff like that. But did you were you good? Did you get good? No, nah, I don't did know. I mean, know? Nah, back then I thought I was good, uh, but no, nah, now I, I mean. How was your like, record? Like, like official, official battles. I, I only did like, like in front of like actual people. Mm-hmm. I only did two, and I lost one, and I won one. Mm-hmm. And it was one was in the block party in the south side, like uh, Rock One and Twenty First, and um, and then another one was right here in the north side. And then like, did you get any checks from the battling? Or huh? Did you get any checks from the battling? Like they would see you battle any girls? Nah, nah. nah I don't was know. Was it all dudes? Maybe like nah, with nah, cars? Nah, nah. Yeah. And then I, I, I was super young. I'm talking about when I was like 15, 16. So it, it was like, yeah. I was still dumb. With, How'd like, you get into with, battling? I, I just, Did your buddy do it, or you would no, I listen just, to a lot of music? I just, um, I just, um, I've always, since I, since I was little, I don't want to say 12, 13 years old, I've always wrote 
wrote. That's what wrote, I, okay. Wrote. So I wrote um, raps. I would write, try to write movies. I would try to write, like, just different shit, you know? So then I started to write raps for a little while, and I thought I was decent. And then I, that's how I got into battling, because uh, I, I thought that was the next step. Like, all right, so I'm writing raps, but I'm not recording anything. Like, I mean, I should just battle. You know, it was a different mentality. It was like the eight-mile era, you know? Like, it was like, you just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eight Mile was... It. You wrote movies too. You just said you wrote movies, like yeah. I tried to write like shows and cartoons, and it was like how old were you when you were doing that? I was like 12, 13 years old. I was writing like I wrote a like a cartoon, and a, but it was it was all like I did comic books. It, I wrote all, comic it, it, books. It, it, I wrote a few it, comic books. It, 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 we actually did a we we started a comic book with a with this guy who knew how to draw back in my grammar school. Mm-hmm. We never finished it, but we did get like four or five pages, and he was a really really good drawer. Yeah, we. Yeah, I had we, a bunch, yeah, it, but it was like a ripoff. It was like called like Dragon Ball X or some shit like that. The the, the guy who did the logo for this that mm-hmm. I'm doing for this podcast, he back. We both started drawing. To, well, he started drawing. We were into comic books and the Wizard, and I would I kind of imitated like I wanted to draw too. So he was always a few months ahead of me as far as, and I was always a little bit behind. But then he kept going. Now he's really good. Night. I just stopped. Did you? Did you ever draw or anything like that? Or no? Nah, I, 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 I can't draw for shit. No, no. no. But yeah, but we, we we came up with like a concept of like. 25 years after Dragon Ball C ended and we, oh, okay. and we came up with like a whole story it was called Dragon Ball X and we came up with like you know different episodes different characters we designed characters shit like that but he did all, all of the artwork and I was doing some of the writing and then but that that's it I never made it past, was, past that was there any shows that you watched growing up that kind of got you into what stand up did you like growing up there was something was it even stand up that you watched yeah, uh, the, or? the earliest stand up that I remember like liking and watching was uh, Que Locos uh, oh. I, I want to say I was already like 13, 14 when I started watching. Who, 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 who were some of the people on there? I remember. I, I mean, I remember all, all the big ones right now. I remember. I remember Fluffy. The first time I saw yeah. Fluffy, he was super hilarious to me at that time. I remember George Lopez, and I remember Felipe Esparza from Oh that. Felipe. Yeah, or young Felipe. He used to look real young at that time. That's when he was still with uh, <laughs> with Fluffy or, or touring with him, or is this is after. No, so it's, uh, I don't know if you remember the show Que Locos, but it was a, uh, it was like a little showcase. You know, it was like six. Comedians in one show, everyone there. They what was it on? It, it wasn't Galavision, if I if I remember. Oh, correctly. now yeah. I remember. I remember. Yeah, yeah so I remember. I, I want to say I was like in seventh and eighth grade. And my older, my older sister, she's actually into stand up. Like, um, she come out to your shows. She 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 does every okay. now and then. Uh, but she's actually she actually was the first one that took me to watch George Lopez live, and uh, I was like sixteen years old when. Where was he at? It was like in, the uh, Austin, the, the Rosemont Theater. Rosemont Theater, the, the, Rosemont the smaller Theater. one. Yeah, yeah. So I, I remember I, I went to watch him like two years in a row. It was like I was I was like sixteen and seventeen, and that that was like my first ever live stand up. And my, my my sister watches stand up even before I started doing stand up. She would occasionally go. When when did you start? When did you start? What age were you when you started? When you hit your first mic? When I hit my first mic, I was twenty five. Twenty five. Where? How long was it before you hit your first mic? And then when you like told yourself, oh, I'm gonna I want to do stand up. Was it like well, a year or two or? So no, so I did a, uh, I did, so I started writing. Like I said, I, I was, I was, I was writing. I was always writing. I started, I, I started writing, like that. I remember jokes. I graduated high school in two thousand and seven. My my senior year, I remember I was writing jokes already. Mm-hmm. And then from there till I finally tried to open mic, it was twenty thirteen. I did three open mics in the spring. It was a, uh, but I I, I I I was not doing it like. I did three. Of, I remember it was one in April and two in May. I got good memory in 2013. But I was only doing them because I was unemployed. As soon as I got a job, I, I was just like, I, I, I got to take care of some shit. I was paying a DUI at the time, so I, I needed to pay it off. How were you when you got your first DUI? Or you only have one. Yeah, yeah, I only have one. I was 24 okay. when I got 24? 24? Yeah, right. so it was like a, this was like a year later. And then um, I was I was unemployed, so I was like, you know what? Let's try stand-up. And it was I'd Google like comedy open mics, and I found one that Tim Weisselbaum used to run in his basement. I don't know if you. I don't know. I you, know Tim. Tim. So t- well, he used to be Tim 2.0 or yeah. 5.0, and then yeah. Tim Weisel. It was yeah. Tim. dot com at that time. Yeah, Tim. dot com. Tim. dot com. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. it was. Uh, so he used to live with Darius Kennedy actually, and they used to have. Well, they had that BL, not BLT comedy. The mm-hmm. they had that one show. I remember. I did yeah, the show he, he, he at the under, across from the. Yeah, well, this is like a year and a half before. So um, they used to run open mic in their in their basement on Friday nights, and I, I did, and it was every other week. So I I did that one three times. Uh, so in a span of like well, four weeks, I did it, and then I got a job. Like I remember the, the day of the last day I did the open mic, I got called. I got, I got hired for a different job, and I just uh, I put it to the side. And then a year later, I I decided that I wanted to do it. That I uh, the audience was super nice to me the first two times I went up. The third time I think I four trays was the first one. N- the, when I started back, four trays. Four yeah, trays. Four okay. trays. Yeah, that was. Uh, 
Yeah, but the the, the mics that I did at Tim Weisselbaum's house, the first two that I did, the the audience was super nice. The first one, I remember Ray Holler was hosting, and then um, no Ray, yeah. and I remember him like announcing me that I was it was my first time. So I guess that set everyone up for being super nice. Oh, okay. And then the second time, everybody was super nice too. And I how they know? Did you tell me your first yeah, time? Yeah, I, I told. Asked? Yeah, okay. I told. Uh, I told Tim. And Tim okay. told Ray Holler. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then um, yeah, and then the third time I did the mic, I'm out of bomb, but I was super drunk that I didn't really, I didn't really care. And it was I was gonna start working next week anyway, so and it was not like I. I at that time, there wasn't a plan to pursue a career. When did you start hitting it consistently? Like I did it 2014. I started 2014. The year later, so 11, Shit. Okay. So 11 months later, I, I decided to... Um, to I, I, I decided maybe like five months later, but it took me like six, seven months to get a little back on bit. Stage. When, when, when you start, when you went back, what uh, what was the first mic that you went to there? So the first mic I did after that was Four Trays. Mm-hmm. I did Four Trays. I remember that night that I was telling you about. Um, that, I remember that was one of my first mics. That was the first one. The second one m- might have been might have been Patsy's on Friday night. Um, Do you remember who was hosting? Not Noah, but it was Noah. It was Noah. Him. Oh yeah, that's when he would host it the was, whole thing, Noah, right? Yeah. I remember. Um, well, I, I, I started going to all the open mics one by one. I don't like. I don't remember all of them, but I remember the comedy bar was one of my first. The old comedy bar. Was it not at the the Geno's or some? I, I don't know if I'm. No, going. no, it wasn't at Geno's. It was a. Uh, it was on. It, it was on Ohio. I don't know, like when you go take the expressway and you get off on Ohio, okay. like a block away. Right okay, away. I think I only been to, to that one, but I don't yeah. think I only did it once. Yeah, I, I did it once. I think that was my second of mine. I did Patsy's. I remember doing Shubas. I remember doing like. Uh, Who was hosting Shubas? Was that tall dude, Chris Condren or whatever? No, nah, it was it was um it was Bobby Butts already. Oh, Buzz, Buzz, yeah, it, yeah, was, yeah. it was Bobby Butts, and um I remember my first bomb was at the the beer belly, like the first bomb that I recognized at least. Oh, beer belly was still around. At North Park? was that at North Park? No, it was at um. Oh, I- yeah, it's I, called Pines, I think. Pine, Pine, in Wicker Park, yeah, in yeah, Wicker Park. Yeah, it was on Jason Mellon and this other dude. So yeah, Jason, and yes, Jason was. So I did. Uh, Shuba, Shuba's was the first mic I ever. I don't know if I, told, I think I told you this before. It's the first mic I ever went to, um, but I didn't go. So what happened was, for like a year, I wanted to do comedy, and then I would email myself these stupid jokes in my Hotmail. <laughs> For my, I can still see them. They were like at my email. It's for like from two two four some at T Mobile. So all these for like a year, I emailed myself premises, and then I wouldn't go. And then finally, my dog died, and me and my girlfriend broke up because I think we broke up because the dog died. That we both had this dog, and then the dog died, and I was like, okay, that's, why are we together? So we broke up, and then <laughs> that's the dog. The dog was only thinking of you together. Yeah, basically, yeah, man. Like, at the like, end, it was it wasn't good at the end, dude, because I got caught up doing some bullshit, and then she didn't trust me, and I started resenting her because she didn't trust me. So then, like, because now I was like, oh, now I'm behaving, but now whenever I would do something, go out, she'd be like, oh, she wouldn't trust me, and then I I resent. It's just bad. The last year was bad, mm-hmm. and then and then the dog and then I had that dead dog in my body, and I was holding that dead dog because. It, it got hit by a car. I took it to the hospital, to the, the the to the vet, but then the vet was like, "Oh, it, we walk him to the vet. He died." And then the vet was like, oh, "Okay, we can we can do this. We can do that. We can bury him. It'll be two hundred dollars." They already charged me two hundred. It'd be another two hundred for this, or a hundred for that. And I was like, "Give my damn dog." And I was like, "We're going to Walmart. I bought some shovels. Like we're going to bury this this dude." Mm-hmm. And then I remember holding the dog, and I was like, "Man, dude, I never nobody ever died. That was the first no family. Nobody ever died. Nothing close to me. So when that little." It was like it was weird because I never held it. It was dead and it wouldn't move. It was I've never the first time I've seen something dead or held it because I would I, I had to carry it to go bury it out of the out of the the van and then I was like man and that's when I was like man I gotta do stand up like you can die any moment and that's the first time I realized so then I went my was my was three dead moose and then I think I just been hitting it ever since when uh, David Drake was hosting it David Drake. David Drake and uh and 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 Rena was hosting it how'd you get that DUI. I got my DUI. Um, I was drinking in uh, Wisconsin, like Kenosha. No, it's called Waterloo. It's like half an hour away from Madison. It was like it's like two hours and a half from here. Is that near the Dells or no? Near the what? Wisconsin the, Dells? No, it's near. It's near Madison. It's near, okay. It's near, oh, near Madison. All right, yeah, all right. it's near Madison. Um, half an hour from Madison. Um, so we were drinking. We, I, we went there. It was actually a Cinco de Mayo weekend, mm-hmm. and it was. Um, we went there to watch. I forgot what fight it was. A, I think I, I think it was a boxing. I think it was a box. I feel a boxing fight. Yeah, I, I, I forget which one it was. Um, Why'd you guys go all the way to Waterloo to watch uh, boxing? My, my cousin was trying to date this one girl from over there. The white girl, Mexican. Mexican girl, Mexican girl. But she went. Did she go to school out there? No. Nah, so she is. Um, the, her family is from the part of Mexico that we're from. 
So that's how they met. The FR, right? No, no, we're from Guerrero. Guerrero? Yeah, con a place called Coacuyula in, uh, in Guerrero. So, yeah, so my, I think my cousin was dating her or he was trying to date her. I, I don't remember. So he was like, let's go over there. And um, the, pair, the, but the, the person's house that we slept in was also like from the town where we're from. Mm -hmm. So we went there. We were drinking Saturday night and then we woke up Sunday and we started drinking all Sunday morning. We were playing cards, I remember. And then like at 6 7 p.m. we're like let's go home and um so i have been drinking all day sunday we bought some beers on the way to drink them from wisconsin to back to chicago back to yeah hanover park actually not chicago okay. yeah it was it's by elgin i don't even know where that's at i know elgin yeah it's louise so it's, it's louise like, still live in elgin he still lives in louise aravello this yeah, comic yeah so hanover park is like 10 minutes away from elgin okay so we actually made it to my cousin's house and then um we're like, let's go get more beers. <laughs> and then this, this was later. It was like 11 o'clock at night. And um, I don't know, man. My cousin, he's just big. He's big into like having like the music real loud in the car. So we went to get some beers and we passed by a, we passed by a cop. And when we bought some beers, um, I put the beers in, in the car. And then the, when I left the store, it was 7-Eleven. We left. It was only like two, three minutes away from my cousin's house. It was like it wasn't that far. Like we went to a liquor store for like two, three minutes. Like that cop, the cop has started following me. He just threw his lights at me, and I, I, I have been drinking all day. There was no way I could fake that I wasn't drunk. I was, I, I, I was trying for him to let me go. Was it your car? Was it your car? It, it was, okay, it was so my you, car. It was, right. I was driving. I was driving. So it, I, I was trying for him to let me go because, like, I had successfully talked my way out of like two, three DUIs in the past. Mm -hmm. But this one, I was just stuttering too much. I was just too, you know, because I, 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 my cousin he literally pulled me over like a block away from my cousin's house. I was just like, ah, we're just going to my cousin's house. We're gonna leave the car there, like don't want, but nah, he he looked like a newer cop. Um, I remember who fought it was a Pacquiao fight, I think. Um, the Asian looking dude, Pacquiao's Asian, he's um, oh wait, Pacquiao is he's Asian, he's Philippine. <laughs> no, I'm thinking of Mayweather, <laughs> that, <laughs> no, that one guy. No, he he's fought, he fought, um, what do you call it, Koto? I think he fought Koto, and like, because of the cop that pulled me was Philippine actually, and we were talking about the fight, and on while I was in the back seat of the car and shit. Oh, when he arrested you? Yeah, when he arrested me. We were talking I, got, about, I got pulled we were talking, over once. Fight, yeah, yeah, and I got taken to jail, but it was like a suspended license. I remember I was in the back and I was trying to like be cool with the guy. I was like, "Oh, actually, you know, I want to be a police. I'm thinking about being a police." So you're just like trying to see, do, say stuff. I, it might, for me, I was trying to say stuff to kind of like, man, Luis, but he, nah, he wasn't. He didn't well, at least um, according to the cops, since I was nice, they he didn't charge me any bail. But I don't know if that's true or not. Or, they just don't charge bail on first time. Um, I don't. Know. I don't remember. Dude. So they, they didn't charge me any bail, but yeah, and it was a. Uh, this was. Um, Did you stay that night, or were you? No, nah, I was in there for like an hour or two, mm -hmm. maybe, and then they let me go without. I think like without bail. Well, you got picked up. Yeah. No. Then um. Then I I, I took a taxi to my cousin's house because I was in Hanover Park, mm -hmm. and then um, yeah, and then it was um. Six thousand dollars later, and here I am, dude. Six thousand—that's not bad, isn't it? Like ten nowadays, or that's what they say. <laughs> that, 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 that's what they say to scare you. But it—it's it, so, so it's keep uh, drinking and driving. So this is what it was for me. Like uh, it was fifteen hundred for the lawyer. Mm -hmm. It was like eighteen hundred for the actual DUI ticket. Okay. It was like um, five hundred, six hundred dollars. I want to say to take out my car the next day. Cause it was like I think like thirty dollars every twelve hours, and mm -hmm. it was like one hundred and fifty for the tow truck, and there was a five hundred dollar like permit you had to get for it because it's DUI. And after that, you know, you pay like two fifty to get your license back. I pay two fifty for classes, fifty bucks where you go to a class where it's just like relatives of people that died in car accidents with drunk people that basically they just go try to make you feel guilty. So you pay fifty bucks for that, and then um, I had a breathalyzer in my car installed that I will pay for like seventy dollars every month for like five months. Oh, with the breathalyzer. Yeah. Did you ever go with a girl? Did you ever take out a girl out in the car yeah, and you had to blow I mean, on it? What'd she say? No, nah, well, you, you explain to them, you know? It's not. It's, it's, I mean, uh, DUIs are a normal thing where I grew up. You know, it's, it's not. It's, it's, it's like. Uh, yeah, 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 like, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, it's not. Like, it's, it's, it's not a big deal. Yeah. It's funny. I know. I don't know if this. I don't know if it's been at, at Mike or something like that, but if you talk about drinking and driving, like around, uh, I think white. I think it is. You know what? Were you talking about hitting. No, St. James on the show the other day was talking about hitting your kids. If. If yeah. you talk about hitting your kids or drinking and driving on wh well, certain white people, they they're like, oh, my God. They're like, I remember, I'm not going to say who it was, but he posted something about drinking and driving or I'm going to go home. And all oh, the yeah, white people yeah, were yeah. like, oh, my God, that's so, man, they were yeah. getting on him. They were getting on him. I was like, man, and then to me, I was like, man, how the fuck are you going to get home? Like, what do you mean? And this be before the Uber days, remember? Like, now nah, you can yeah, take an Uber if nah. you're really. Nah, nah yeah, dude. The, if I'm really fucked up. I mean, 
there's, there's no excuse, for this, yeah. but like, yeah, definitely. At, at least we're. I've, I have experiences with some comedians, definitely whiter comedians. <laughs> Um, not all the white, you know, no, but, no. but yeah, I, de- definitely come from I definitely had like working class taking um trips to like uh, one time I went to to Rockford uh, with David Gavry, mm-hmm. and I, I think I, I think I just had like a pitcher, that's it, which is what like four or five beers. Mm-hmm. He was super scared on the way back, like, oh. hey man, you sure you arrived? And I'm like, calm down, dude, the fuck out of here, it was four or five beers, you know what I'm saying? Like, like does David a, does he drink? Uh, yeah, he, I he, think he drinks. He drinks. He drinks, but he, he, I guess he was just scared. Like at that, we, we went we went out did an open mic. Marcos used to run open mic at a bowling alley uh, back then. No, I did a VFW one. That's how that's I how I, that. I got introduced to Marco. No, so yeah, so he he, he used to run open mic at a bowling alley, and then uh, like I told David Gabriel, like, hey, this guy's booking me. If you wanna, we'll go out to the open mic. And yeah, I drank a pitcher, dude. Like, you know, I think it's like if I'm not mistaken, it's like four and a quarter of beer. Okay, something like that. But it's not it's not it's not even five beers. No, uh, and yeah, and yeah, he was super afraid, and I remember just people telling me things like that. Like, are you okay to drive? Like, come on, man. Like. Like uh, yeah, like I'm I'm older now, um, and now yeah, if I don't feel good, I'll take the bus or something like that. But if I feel good, I feel good. I don't know. I I uh, so me me and Oscar were on a show on Thursday, right? Yeah, was it there? So we were showing Pilsen when I how do you say Alex's last name? Monte, Mon- Monte, the way you read is Montelongo. Montelongo, Mon- Montelongo, right? Mm-hmm. Hey man, so me and Oscar did a show. We're supposed and there was like, going to be like an after party, right? Where man, there was this girl, that girl, that girl. She, I told you she was a cop. So uh, she was a cop. That cop, that hot chick I was talking to. Uh-huh, yeah, she, she was, was a cop, right? She was, cause I don't know if I told you. So uh, we were at the show, and after the show, some of the Alex was there with his wife. He produced the show Montelongo, and there was a girl that I started talking to. Cause I do this joke where I say, "Oh, who's single?" and then I pay attention to who's single, mm-hmm. and I, and then I. So I went to go talk to her afterwards, and then I told her story about. Oh, the UFC. She went to the UFC like the other week. I was like, oh, me too. And I told her how I wanted to go to the UFC on acid mm-hmm. because I, I went and I went to the first fight. I was there for like five hours because I went for the prelims to the whole thing. And I, and I told her, like, next time I think I want to do that like an acid or something. And I've never done acid, but it seems <laughs> I have. The reason is I, I thought about it is because I have acid at my house because about a few months ago, I picked up this crazy white girl that I kind of know and I met at a bar that she's a girl. I, I used to have this joke about uh, a girl. Gave me Roadhead for Newports. That's that's the girl. So mm-hmm. she, we went to a hotel and she wanted some cigarettes. And I, I was like, dude, I got cigarettes. She's like, no, I want Newports. And I got these are menthol. She's like, no, if you take me to the gas station to get to get Newports, I'll give you Roadhead. And I was like, all right, let's go. All right. <laughs> so that's fucking uh, Newports for Roadhead, right, or whatever the hell. So she, uh, she, she hit me up for a ride, and I was like, man. And I'm dry, I'm looking at my phone. I was like, oh, let me pick her up. Maybe you know. I can get some head or something, but when I picked her up, she was uh she was like on the side of the road somewhere, and I guess she was on acid. And I was like, she was tripping on acid, and I was like, you know what, I don't want to do this. So then, but then we had to go pick up another girl who was like eighteen, who was some eighteen lesbian. And it was, and I was like, at that point, <laughs> yeah, some eighteen. She's like, oh, how old are you? I'm eighteen. And I was like, oh my god, I got this chick on acid. Um, how you doing, sir? Uh, I got that was the owner. Uh, I got this chick on it. Yeah, she's on acid. I'm picking up some 18. And the problem is when I'm picking the 18 year old, she's not coming out of the house. And I'm like freaking out. I was like, dude, am I getting like what's going on here? So finally, I take him some stupid house party. And they, hey, you want to you want to come with us? And I was like, no, are there dudes there? And I was like, no, I'm not going. I'm not going. I was like, look, man, I got to work at that point. I didn't really drink. So I cut my losses. If I was drinking. I probably would have got inside. And who knows what would happened? <laughs> but then they didn't have any money. I was like, you know what? I don't have any gas money, but I got acid. So they gave me a tab of acid to pay for me instead of gas so i have it sitting in my house in my safe mm-hmm. and i was telling the cop this whole n- most of this and i was like i've asked and i want to do it it's at the cop and then she's like well i don't do that i was like have you done mushrooms do you ask like these questions and she was like ah, uh, well maybe when i retire and i'm like okay she must be a nurse or something i was like what do you do <laughs> yeah i was like retire they get drug tests i know a lot of uh, nurses yeah, right yeah. And she's like i'm a cop and i'm like what and she's like no no serious i'm a cop and she's like no don't, don't worry but she gave me like don't worry don't worry it's, it's my day i don't give i don't care but she works West Side Narcotics, so she works like yeah. a, a tough, a tough beat. But then, we, so me and Oscar are supposed to go to this after party. Uh, uh, but Oscar went home because you don't want to fucking get lit or stay up. No, yeah, I don't want to drink too much and then have to drive from all the way to South Side all the way back to my house. And it was just that, that, that was the thing. I, I don't want to be driving like that. And I'm like, man, if I go with this dude, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get wasted. It was me, Alex, and his brother who ended up at the fucking house. Yeah. Nobody else, dude. No, girl, just me, Alex, and his brother, dude. That's it, dude. No, and I was like, fuck. Dude. And the only reason I didn't ask her for Instagram or something like that, because I was like, okay, we're going to go. I don't want to look thirsty. We're going to go to this after party. 
but it was just three, and I was like, no. I thought I, I thought that was gonna go, and I was like, yeah. I, she, you and her were looking like you guys were were having a good conversation. So I'm like, yeah, like this is this was gonna go. I, I thought it was gonna go, and then yeah, and then she didn't end up going. <laughs> she ended up going, but it was just three dudes. I'm just sitting there. And I was like, did this just happen? I was like, man, dude. And I was like, and it's late. I live walk. I live an hour away. I live like in Waukegan. And I was like, fuck, whatever. So I just kicked it with Alex. I talked to him about some stuff about Pilsen. And then, but then afterwards, I look, man, what's up with this girl? When I dropped him off, I dropped him off at his uh-huh. crib. And he was like, well, you know, we're, she's single. We're trying to, but we're trying to, you know, hook her up with somebody. And I was like, dude, put in the word. And the next day, I'm all excited. I'm telling my friends, oh, I met this cop. Uh-huh. Woo, woo. There was some other girl I was talking to at the time. And I was like, I was like, man, fuck her. And it's all about this. Because I don't know if you, I get, I get really into like, a, I get really into a chick real right away. And then. I don't know. I'm a moron. But then but then he messaged me. He's like, man, dude, he was like, nah, she's seen somebody. And I was like, that that was it, dude. Oh, that she, was, she, she's pretty good looking to be. She um, was hot, dude. For being a fucking cop, dude. It's hard to imagine that she's not at least talking to at least a few dudes. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's hard yeah, to, yeah. Uh, yeah. But, but I know some cops. They're fucking wild. I know. I have a friend yeah. who's a cop. They're, it's a stressful job, and I get it, man. They're fucking. They're wild, dude. So I could tell she was wild because she was fucking doing the whole. Um, I don't know. She was acting crazy, but but I wasn't drinking, so I had to worry. I stopped drinking. I don't know. So you went to chill with Alex at the after party. Alex's brother. Yeah, that's <laughs> it, dude. Just three dudes, dude. Just yeah, three. Yeah, just yeah. and I was just like, but it was. I talked to Alex about some stuff and about the show. You know that dude was trying to charge. We're talking about Mexicans. You know what I mean? Like that dude was trying to charge Alex like five hundred bucks to use the room because Alex went up to him and was like, "Hey, man, hey, let's. I want to. I'm going to bring some people and blah blah blah." And the guy's like, "All right, you want to use my space?" Five hundred dollars, and it's like we we're talking about like this mentality with like Mexican dudes, like oh I need to get paid or something. I don't know. Like I feel. <sighs> or the one in Romeo Bill or the one that you? No, I don't even know what happened with the one in Romeo Bill. <coughs> the one we did at I'm, I won't say where it's at, but the one we did there. How much did he charge them? He charged money for the 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 owner like charged them. I think I took a I'm thinking took a took a loss on that one. When we were talking about it, but the owner was, I think he talked him down to some, but the owner initially was like, okay, yeah, we could, you guys could do a show here, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. So he's, bring, you saw the place, there wasn't that many people. So he's going to bring people to the place, and, you know, bring some business. And the owner was like, all right, $500, I'll let you sell beer. And it's like, no, that's crazy. Yeah, no, yeah, I don't know what the deal, I mean, I mean, um, I don't, no, I get it if you're running a theater or something like that. Yeah, but I don't know. It's how a bar it, yeah. that's not getting business and you're bringing some business. To it, it's, it's I, I'd work out a different deal than I'm gonna charge you 500 bucks. But how did it work at the attic? You guys rented that out though, right? No, we well, the so we when I started doing the attic, we were at the playground theater and we, um, the first, yeah, the for the first, so it was you, you, Ed, it was uh, seven of us, it was Damn. Ed, Brandon Kiefer, it was uh, Joel Boyd, um, James Fisher, David Gabriel. Joe Boy, oh Fisher's ahead. Joe David Boy. Gabriel, and Joe Boy still live around here? No, he's in Los Angeles. Okay, he's been he's been gone for a while. Mm-hmm. And then um, Anthony Bonazzo and me. Uh-huh. And then um, oh Bonazzo, yeah, yeah. Uh, he hosted your album. So we did the we did a I started in January, so we did a January February March show at the Playground Theater. We were doing once a month, mm-hmm. and um, I think I might have done February, March, April. That one we were charging, they were charging us two hundred dollars per show. We were losing like thirty five dollars per per show. Damn! But it was seven of us. So it was like five bucks for each. So it's, it's it, 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 okay. we didn't lose that much, like because it, it was seven of us. And the, what did you guys? Did they have a whole setup there as far as equipment? Like, what did you have to bring equipment? No, or we didn't have to bring anything. It was uh, it was just yeah, it, it was just with the prices. It, it was like when we lowered them, we would get a good turnout, but then. We, you know, so so was there any drinks that you could sell there? Or they would sell. No, nah, no, nah, it was BYOB. BYOB. It was okay. BYOB. So it was like we had like the prices like at ten, twelve dollars, and then we put them down to I think five dollars online, eight dollars at the door. But it, and we, it didn't matter. We we still we got more people that way, but we still made like one hundred and seventy. We still made less than than what we. And then the show after us was underground, underground, and they weren't paying anything. And it, it was um, and they were bringing a lot of people in. Where was that at? It was at the playground theater. Wait, underground undergrad? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So they used to they used to have the show after us, and they would get like twice the people we would get, and they were and they weren't paying. Anything. How come they weren't paying? Because according to them, they were only charging us because we had prime time because we had eight p.m. show, and the underground. I don't know what what day was it? Thursday. Uh, Thursday eight p.m. and um and the underground underground had a, a ten p.m. show, so the ten p.m. show 
they, they had worked out a different deal. Mm-hmm. And then um, um, Brandon Kiefer and Ed Towns would drink at this bar on Lincoln and Southport. And then they're just like, let's just move the show here. That way we don't lose any money. Well, do you remember what bar is? It's called, it's called I, think, I think it's called the Lincoln Tab. But it's right in the corner of mm-hmm. Southport, Wellington, and Lincoln where they all meet. I don't know if you remember that mic. Um, uh, the People's Mic, Friday Night Mic that they used to have at the Pratik. And I used to run it. At the tattoo place? No, that was a Sunday no, mic. No, no, no. No, I don't remember the People's no, Mic. It, I don't think. You remember the people's mic? It was a Friday night mic. Um, well, it's, it's like a block away from there. I, I, I was going to use that as a reference. But it's about a couple blocks away from Patsy's. Okay. That's where it's at. On Lincoln. Just like if you keep going two blocks north on Lincoln, you, you'll you find a bar. that We, we, we ran the, the show for another eight months. But um, that like that bar was cool. Like The bartenders were real, real cool with us and everything. But I, I, I don't think that bar made for a good... For the a good, setup? Yeah, because it, 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 it was just like a... There was like a pole, like right... In the middle, like blocking the stage, and it was just, and we always had a hard time. Um, like we, we, we would have like two, we, st- we changed it two shows every moment we started there, and it'll be like one, we would get like 20 people, another one, we'll get like four people, and that never changed. It was like all the eight months like that, so it was a uh, like, okay, we got 20 people today, pretty cool. Next, next two weeks, we get four people, and, I, it's, and it's, kind of, it's kind of weird, kind of embarrassing trying to book good comedians. That sucks, dude. Remember that and show you did with Noah where, uh, like, uh, nobody showed up? Yeah. Did they get canceled? It was at that yeah. sixth line. It was, like, in Pilsen, Yeah, right? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what. Those fucking suck, dude. I'm not sure what Noah's, because Noah doesn't have any, I mean, so I, this, this show. I run Producing's the, hard, but. Uh, so I, I run Chicago Finest Stand Up Now. I'm one of the producers in that show. It's Elmhurst, right? That's on Glen, Glenview. Glenview, Glenview. Okay. It's the fourth show that I that I helped run. Mm-hmm. I, I did The Attic. I did, um. I did that attic for 11 months. I did a show with uh, Duke Breezy and Bob Keen. We did that one for like five months. Was that like the talk show one? Yeah. Okay. And then I ran uh, with Noah. We ran it for like two months, the Slam Theater. And it was Tim Weisselbaum too. And it was like, I wouldn't run any shows like the way those shows were ran anymore. Like, You know, like it was um, in the attic. We definitely, I think we had like really funny comedians, really good comedians. But the people I run the show with now, they're more into running the show than the people in the attic were. The people in the attic were more of uh, like we would have a lot of arguments on comedy, just on what I like who to book or yeah, yeah. But we would never have any any talks about what are we doing to get more people on the show. What are we doing? To get, oh, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Season, you, you, yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying? Mark, that's important. Though. Yeah, Mark. and then at the at the bar we do now, or the people I run the show with now, we are more focused on that, which is. I think it's what every show should be focused on, right? Like it's easy to get a venue and book comedians. That's the yeah. Easy, that's the easiest. That's part. the easiest part. Yeah, yeah. that's the easiest part. The uh, hard part is getting people in. Yeah. But what do you guys do? What do you guys do? Because yeah. I don't. Uh, so we did a lot of promotion in Glenview. Okay. Like, like, is it is it mostly online? Is, is it so groups? Is so it we, Facebook groups? Or? So we do. Yeah. So we pay for an ad once a month on Facebook, and we you know we have reached the parameters. The sponsor ad thing. In Glenview, and we have um like. Especially uh, Andrew Bracatro has a lot of like, like goes to the like motels, hotels nearby, and you know gives them flyers, flyers and okay. shit like that. We we'll post flyers. We we'll try to. He tries to have like a presence in Glenview. Um, we give away like free tickets at every show, so we'll pick out winners every show, and we give them like a few free tickets so that they could keep coming back and stuff like that. And uh, and the owner he helps out a, a, a lot too. The owner actually like. He gets some some people in. Yeah, he gets some people in. He um he'll promote it like he he's the owner, but he also bartends there. Okay. A couple times a week. So when he's working, he'll like he, this guy right here. He, yeah. When, I like this setup. This is good. I like how it's separated. Yeah. Like remember Frank's in Wisconsin, how yeah. it's separated from the. Uh, there's there's a mic I go to now where it's not separated and it's I can't think of it and it's like, and it starts to build up. Um. Oh, I know which one it is. No, I don't want to say which one it is. I'll not tell yet. you after. So yeah, so yeah, so so definitely yeah. The show we, I, I run now, I'm I'm happy, not with everything, but happy. Yeah, this is probably the 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 best group of people that I've ran a show with when it comes. How to many? How many of you? It's five of us. You see, that's not bad. When I did that shit in Joaquin, it was me and kind of working with the owners a little bit. Like they did the fire and stuff, but man, it was too much. It was like basically all me. And then it's uh, what when you did it, I brought you. It was you. It was me, Joey. No, when, when I did it, it was no, it, wasn't it, it was Kevin Evans, Kevin Bozeman, and um, Bozeman, and uh, Lance Richards, and Lance. Yeah, yeah. And at that at that point, it was embarrassing because Kevin went up to me. He's like, "Hey, 
can I get a uh, like simple ass drinks? He was like, uh, not, uh, what is it, ginger ale and and what's that Irish whiskey people drink? I don't know. Nah. Oh, you don't. You just drink beer, right? I, I'm, a, I'm a beer drinker. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, some Irish with like they didn't have, like four drinks in a row, Jack and Coke, this and that. They didn't have anything, and I was like, man, dude, like it was just the the last ones. I was, I just got kind of frustrated. With one of the one of the owners is really good. The other one, man, he was he was pissing me off, dude. Like he he tried to make one of the shows free. Like I got the flyer, and I was like, hey, it was in a group message. It's like, hey, uh, it's supposed to be a cover, ten dollar cover in the drink. He's like, nah, he, uh, I decided I want to go free. And I was like, no, we're not doing anything free. Because he was just trying to get as many people out in there. And I was mm-hmm. like, I wasn't having it. I knew, I know Joaquin. I knew what kind of crowd that would bring. And I was like, no, I want people to pay. Otherwise, they're just going to get too wild in there, dude. If, if, when people, I don't know, I feel when people don't pay for stuff, they don't care. So. No, exactly. Yeah, even, even, definitely. Even, even the $5, even the $5 cover mm-hmm. gets people to pay attention more. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I remember I, I was supposed to do that room after you didn't run anymore when Mark was running, and then but we had a bad show. It was the rain. Oh, day. you did you write up with Slusage Alex uh, Slusageson? She deleted uh, my Facebook. She don't like me. Yeah, no, yeah, she. I think she likes me. I don't know. Yeah, she don't like me, dude. No, I was I was told by the bartender at uh, uh, Small Town Brewery. She's like she don't like you. Um, <laughs> no, I mean I was always. Uh, we were never that close until that day that we drove up and we. We talk fine on the way there. We talk fine on the way back, and um, but yeah. So we 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 drove. She was actually gonna headline no, that show, and um, but it was. Is she still doing comedy? I don't know because she's, she's doing comedy in California. She's doing comedy. Oh, she's been in California. Yeah, she's been. My, one of my first mics. It was me, her, and some girl, or my second mic. Uh, the one Shapiro used to host before he died of a heart attack. American Dream. American Dream. American yeah. Dream. It was her, and then she did something about some porn stuff in Florida. She was from Florida. I thought I was always cool with her. But the, what the bartender told me was like, hey, she, she doesn't like you because, you know, something about maybe rapier material, which uh-huh. stuff that I don't even I don't do any of that. But first, do you do any material that you did your first like year or two? I don't think I do any of it. Yeah, I did. So I I, I used to so when my first um, I want to say when I was three, four months in, I, 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 I did do a rape joke and it was uh, I thought it was funny. Uh, I, I, I did it for like five, six months and then I just. Do you remember I, the joke was or the gist yeah, of it? Yeah, I remember. I remember the gist of it. I remember the gist of it was, and it, it was a girl who, who would call me, and I would never pick up her calls. And then when I finally picked up her call, and this this happened to me for real, mm-hmm. she asked me like, she was like, "Oh, you never pick up my calls." She was like, "Like, what if I was getting raped and you do not pick up my calls?" <laughs> and then I would mimic her like, "Like, if you're getting raped, don't call me. Like, call the police. Right? Like, <laughs> yeah. like, what am I gonna do? Talk you through it? Like." Like, don't worry, baby. <laughs> just breathe a little bit. Like, it's okay. Like, this guy hasn't had any in a while, so he probably comes quick, right? Like, <laughs> shit oh, like that. Right? Like, it's, it, it was stuff like that. It, it was. It, 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 that, that was the gist of the joke. Yeah, that, that's like eighty percent of it, right? There. I don't. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't remember. But it was. It was three punches. I have. Uh-huh. I, it was. Um, and then, um, yeah. After a while, I'm like, you know what? The the joke is not worth it. It's not. It, it's a good. It, it, I thought it was a funny joke, but it was like. If it's gonna get me banned from shows, if it's gonna get me, what happened in, in Wisconsin it, 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 at the comedy festival? You did a joke there, and then all of a sudden people oh, were tripping. Yeah, yeah. It was a robbery joke, or, or something? yeah. So it, 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 the so what happened in Wisconsin was that it was a it was a so a, a lot of things happened. It, it was supposed to be a clean mic, and I forgot it was supposed to be a clean mic. Mm-hmm. It was at a pizza shop at a they don't do that mic no more. Mic failed according to people um, because of it was a clean mic. I, I that's what that's what I was an older dude trying to uh, nah, so it, it was uh so it, so there was like a it was a the women's comedy festival at that point of that day and I had another show with Louis Arevalo we drove to a different show mm-hmm. so it was like that was a Thursday mic so everybody from like the women's festival came in and we came in and I did the I, I, I like I, I recorded that joke on my album mm-hmm. the one about people getting robbed yeah yeah I remember so it, it's uh the problem was that I used to say the word victim blaming at the beginning and um and uh here in the united states when victim blaming is immediately associated with rape okay but i i, I wasn't talking about, i was get, talking about you know so you didn't say rape you no i didn't say rape. I, 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 I didn't say it. so i i just say i just said i'm in favor of victim blaming when people get robbed that, that, that's because that's that's what the joke is about about how yeah like some you, people are stupid your dumb ass got robbed yeah, yeah. Your dumb ass got robbed. yeah. You. but yeah so and it was like so it was a type of crowd where like nobody was paying attention and uh, as soon as the as soon as I used the word victim blaming, everybody paid attention, but they didn't understand what I was talking about. And so uh, some um, the comedian that went after me, she thought that I had 
she thought that by my comparison saying that it's okay to people get it robbed that I was actually saying that it's okay for people to get raped. You know what I'm saying? Did Which you ever I, bring up rape or no? Or huh? Did you compare? Was there a comparison to rape no, or no? No. So I said, so I, I, I think, you know what? I, I think I would say something like, like, like except for rape, I'm in favor of victim blaming. It was something like that. Like mm-hmm. Except for rape, I'm in favor of victim blaming. And then I will go into that. But like, I guess people didn't really hear that part because no, nobody was paying. It was like, you know, it was all comedian and no one was paying attention. So they just heard like the words, and then they didn't. They thought that I was saying like, "Yes, you see how it's okay to rob people. It's okay to, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, it, it was just weird. You did it yourself, bitch. Yeah. So, <laughs> it, so, so it was like, so the next comedian, just, she just went up, and um, um, I don't, I don't even know who she is, or I've never seen her after or before that. And then um, she was like, "Oh, how can you?" I, she. Just, Started going at me like if I was if I had said something. I wasn't so she was in the host. He was just the next comic. Yeah, she was, she was next comic after me. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's Madison. Isn't Madison super like? I don't know. Super. It's a college town, so there's a lot. Yeah, I've like, always. Ever, I don't know. I've let me see. I've only done the state, the mic on state, like once or twice, or maybe once. I don't so remember. I've, when it, I've done the mic on state um, twice. Yeah. I've done. Um, I've done like the festival the last two years. And I've done um, a couple shows with some dude named Sean Baskets, that Lewis. Um, Sean, I think I know Sean. He's a he's a me- Mexican dude, shorter dude. Um, he's he's a, he's a really good dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I reached out to him before. Yeah, I know who that is. Yeah. So uh, yeah, and um, yeah, and I don't like I um, I don't consider myself that controversial comedian at all. Like I, I feel like I don't do, com- and I and I don't do it on purpose. I don't. I there's certain subjects that I just don't talk about on purpose. Like even if I think of something funny to say, I'm like, this is this subject is not for me. And it was. What do you uh, like staying away from? Huh? What do you like to stay away? I from? I, I, I I stay away from all uh, from just. Let me see. I, 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 I anything offensive, like for example, the rape joke. Like I don't want to yeah. do. Like I don't want to do any rape joke. I just don't want to do any rape. Just just not. I don't do any of it. Well, I mean, I do used to do a lot, but I don't. I, that's just something I, I don't want to do. I don't want to. Um, I don't want to do like I like doing Mexican material, but I don't like doing white people do this, Mexican people do this. Mm-hmm. You know that that setup. I don't. I don't like doing. Um, I don't. Uh, I don't. I, I don't. I don't. I, I try not to do dirty material that much. So like a- everything I write is I, it is it dirty like the content like sexual stuff yeah, or like because like I don't really curse dude I don't I don't think I hear you curse either no I don't curse that much I I, I say the word shit a lot okay but uh, uh, yeah um, so I so I don't like to do any um, any dirty like I, I like I every now and then I do think of a good like premise I'm like oh I should do this mm-hmm. but yeah I try to focus on most of my material not being dirty just because you know like uh, I've done shows out in the burbs and where people ask you not to be dirty and I feel like I, I gotta have strong material that's not dirty you know and yeah and it's it's hard it's hard for a lot of I'm gonna do a clean show soon yeah so what yeah. is it the Liberty Bell that one's a clean show right? that one's a clean show and it's, I did it once and I once I saw somebody they started going kind of dirty and I could tell like because everybody kind of knows it's clean and everybody started getting a little bit uncomfortable like, yeah oh, what is he doing like you know when it's it, i remember i noticed that when it was yeah so yeah so i uh, so they've, they've actually let me headline that show a couple times now but mm-hmm. i've done it i've been doing it for the past like three four years a different guy runs it right or yeah the, the they, own, not the owner not david stewart anymore right so or, they just got a new person like in june or, mm-hmm. or yeah they just got a new person yeah i did like the main the june one was the last one i did okay and then um i think after that i got an email saying they got a new person yeah, so I, I do those. Some of Larry Bloom shows, he tells me to be clean. Uh, I did a show with Spark in the like three hours away from here, like two weeks ago. Spark Tab Tab Tab. Yeah. Okay. He needed a host for a show, and I was like, sure, I'll go. In Illinois. It was in Illinois, but it was a. Uh, what's that city called? It's far though. It was like three hours away. From what here. crane shows you do? I've never done the crane show. You never done. I've you never, never done, done Beloit. Oh yeah, yeah. I've yeah, done, you've uh, done. Yeah, you done, must yeah. have done. Must. People don't know. Crane's butter hosts uh, all these shows. I think you know who Triple Run is. He's a West Coast guy. They, I've heard people no. talking about him. Crane's hosts some shows in like Wisconsin. A lot of people don't think. Did you think he was real? Well, a lot of people tell me don't, they don't think Crane's was real. No, like well, a real person. well, I've never met him in person. No, you haven't. I've never met him. So I've done uh, I've done the Beloit one twice, and um, I've had good sets both times. I've never had a, I've never had any issues at. But I, I like yeah. that room. I've always had the, good good sets in that room. Yeah, we. I've seen people from the city though eat fucking shit I, in that room. Well, that that day, um, the day the day I did it the last time, which was uh, I want to say four or five months ago. Yeah, the first few comedians they were having trouble. It's just. 
because I feel like in Chicago, comedy is not um, Chicago comedy is not built for long sets. Like it's just like you, even at most showcases. Well, that's how I started. You, all my jokes you, are one-liners. You, you have four, four, three-minute sets, five minutes like, max. You do all these showcases. For the most part, you're doing eight, ten minutes. You know what I'm saying? Like you're not doing. So I, I when you go out to the burbs and do twenty minutes the first time, it, like even if your jokes are individually great four-minute sets, when you put those five four-minute sets together, they it's don't flow. Clunky. It, it, it's yeah, kind of clunky. It, it's yeah, kind of clunky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you're like you're you're making the same point you made at the first set. You know what I'm saying? Like. So that, that that's what I felt was a, was a was the problem with the comedians that I went. Not, not that I don't think they're funny, but it just they're not used to doing twenty minute sets. And uh, that the thing we did in the attic, um, the attic was the original idea for the attic was that there was not a shows giving people twenty minutes. So I was like a year and nine months in, I was already doing twenty minutes every month. So I think I grew a lot as a comedian because of the attic. That- because of that, because I was doing twenty minutes. That's sets what I like going month. to Harvey's because Harvey's you guys would give us like seven to ten before. It was like, what was it? The first few would get 10. So I liked going to, to Harvey's because it was, uh, we get work out a little bit. Long. It was a little bit weird uh, sometimes, but. Harvey's? I don't know. Harvey, you were the host. Oh, yeah. Come on, dude. You were a fucking host at Harvey's before that chick went to <laughs> Harvey, St. Louis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Harvey's it? was in Pilsen, dude. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for real, for real. Was we, like, I'm not going to call it the comic, but there was a comic. Yeah, yeah. You know who it was, yeah. man? We were, I don't think I was there that night. Some guy was walking no, by yeah, yeah. with MS, and the comic started uh, uh, kind of roasting him, right? Yeah, uh, so he, so I don't remember how the setup was. You remember the, the bathroom was in the back. Yeah, yeah, we had to walk past the kind of so, the quote unquote uh, stage. The dude, the dude walked by Vincent, and Vincent thought that he had gone into the bathroom or into the back already. You uh-huh. know? And but dude, was, when Vincent started talking, he um, the dude was still like barely like at the at the door, uh-huh. and he stopped and he heard everything. Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, I, I felt like. Um, he didn't want to do it anyways, right? Like, or I he like wanted the bell. The owner wanted the bell. Yeah, I felt like the owner wanted to bail on the on the mic already. Cause I mean, n- nobody was buying shit. Like it was just like, like I would see comedians go there and like. Who was it? Me, you, Stephanie. Sometimes, sometimes yeah. Alex would go. Uh, I'm I trying to think what city that, mics would. Be. I remember like Sono going a few times. Uh, Who? Uh, Sono. I grew up. Oh yeah, she would go. Yeah, she yeah. Was there a few times. That's uh, when I saw that she spoke Spanish. I was like, oh shit. Khalil Wilson was to go Khalil. there. Where's Khalil? Is he still in Chicago? Did nah, he stop doing comedy for a little bit? Did he move? No, nah, he moved. I'm not 100 percent sure where, but he moved. Okay, he moved. He's not. He's not in Chicago. Because no I thought about, him. I was like, man, what happened to Khalil, man? And I was like, because I expect him to see him on more stuff, but yeah. then, no, no, nah, yeah, he. It's, it's been a while since he moved. Like at least a year. It was. Okay. Um, yeah, then he, then he moved, and um. Well, yeah. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's the thing I felt about Chicago. Is it just don't you just don't have enough opportunities to do longer sets, and and you need that. I've I, I've gotten lucky. Like I, I think since like since I was like a year and nine months in, I've been doing at least one twenty minute set every other week, every other every month at least. Okay. So twenty minutes, it's that's like my comfort zone, like twenty to twenty five. Like anything below that, I feel like a short sometimes. I I used to be when I started man it was five five I had down because my sh- jokes were short maybe the last year I've been transitioning to less now be now if somebody s- tells me five minutes I feel like uncomfortable like oh but before it, I had no problem because when I first started because all the mics were three to four minutes my jokes were all like I started as one liners um, but man what I noticed about what Chicago comics to go to maybe the burbs. I feel like there was a lot of comics that were doing jokes, kind of jokes for their friends or for certain, like the certain, you know, back of the room type of scene. And you go out and you're performing in front of regular people that kind of su- more alty, alty stuff that isn't that strong. I've seen it just like, just eat shit. And it's like, uh, no, yeah, well, that I've doesn't... seen a lot. I've seen a lot. I've seen a lot. I see who this one guy I saw, he started reading in a show in front of in the other below, it's south below. He started reading out, out the menu. He just grabbed the menu, tried to Andy Kaufman, and started reading for the menu. And it's like, and nobody was having it, dude. <laughs> nobody was fucking having it, dude. And then. Nah, yeah, I mean, it, it is what it is. Yeah, definitely comedy is different everywhere you go. I mean, you. Um, we stay in the cities. I mean, I'm. Um, the cities are way, like, way more liberal, way more stuff like that. You know, and the suburbs are not like that. It, oh yeah, the God stuff. Yeah. The God stuff. I when I did my one of my first black shows with Sonia D. Did you ever do a Sonia D show? I never did a Sonia D show. Okay. All right. 
I won't say anything. But uh, when I did my first show, I did some jokes that were it was like religious stuff, and it's not black folks ain't having you talking about God. Yeah. It's <laughs> not. It's not unless it's like in a, unless you're talking about church. But if it's in a weird kind of no, they're not. They're not gonna. And I learned. I was like, oh no no. No God, so don't don't mess with God, and uh, no gay shit, no no gay stuff. They don't they didn't like it from what from what I noticed when I did the black shows. Do you have you done do you do a, lot of, a lot of black rooms? Did you do a lot of I black d- rooms? I've done not done a lot of black rooms, but I've done I've done some black rooms. Did you ever do jokes and notes when it was around? Did you ever? Did I, you ever I, 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 I went twice. I never got a jokes and notes. Was this? It was a it was a really good club on the south side. It was yeah. Lindsay. I forgot her name. Uh, it was uh, but it, from what I heard, when she opened up that sh- that that location uh the city they were or that area was going to give her supposed to build stuff around her and blah 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 do all this stuff whatever that area that alderman and then when she did it there was nothing dude so it was it was just that it, it was just mm-hmm. that so that's what i heard it was one of the reasons it, it went down because i used to uh, my whole life i played soccer there at washington park which is was uh, which is where the joseph knows was that and uh, i remember if the if chicago had gone had got in the olympics I don't know if you remember, but Chicago was where? Yeah, it was in running. I think for the 2016 Olympics. Who got those? Was it like it was real? It was Hanito. Oh, okay. Um, the Olympic like village, what they what they, they call it, was going to be built there oh. in, in Washington Park. That, that that's where they were going to build it at. So that that's the only thing I remember about like like people getting promised that they were going to build stuff there. I, so I've been playing Washington Park since I was a little kid. So I, I remember they used to tell us that like. If Chicago gets the Olympics, we're not gonna play in this park anymore because because they're they're they're, they're gonna, gonna they're gonna build it around. They're there. gonna take it over. What, yeah. What what uh, when you you were gonna record your Oscar recorded album? Was it how, was it like two months ago? May was it three? It was, o- what three month are we in July? No, we're in uh, August. Or August th- three months ago. So three months ago, when you were gonna record one like two years before that, right? No, so I was looking to record it a year before that. A year before that. A year, a year before, before that. that. Yeah. You feel better? It was it was. Yeah, I, I, I definitely feel like I. have uh, I improved in a year, definitely. Uh, from that year to this year, I, I, I didn't, I didn't, I don't think I added a lot of new jokes. Maybe like two new jokes, but I added like definitely a lot of different tags for a lot of the older jokes. So I'm glad that what, they, when you when are you releasing it? Do you have an idea of the day? I think we I want to release it in September. September, right? Next September. Month, yeah. uh, I just I just finished getting all the videos. Um, so I had got I got in the videos. Nelly Bob was away. Um, he was the one that recorded it for me. The video portion so i, I had intru- instructed him to put like at the end of the video like my email and uh so i cut it down to 12 different clips now okay so it's like the the first one is like 10 minutes and then all the other ones are like five minutes okay uh, and then um so it was gonna be you know the clip and then at the end you know for booking purposes do these email this is my instagram and then um the university i used to go to school with took my my email away so Man, you were so using your college emo, dude. Yeah. How old are you, dude? Thirty. Come on, dude. <laughs> you were so using. I I didn't drop out that long ago. I dropped out when I was like twenty seven. Yeah, dude. Yeah. But get it. There's Gmail. There's Jack. I mean, I still use well, the Hotmail. Was, well, that was a Gmail. That, that what, the college used a fucking Gmail. Yeah. So it was. A what Gmail. kind of college was this, dude? No Eastern no University. They used yeah. a Gmail. They didn't have their own email. So it, it was neiu dot edu, but it was a Gmail. It was like a. What was it? NIU and a number? Like what? Oscar uh, NIU? Uh, do you no, you don't have like, to give the email. It, it was huh? like, oh, um, it was well, O hyphen, my last name, car, at NIU.edu. But that email was like part of like, I don't kind of explain it, but it was a Gmail email. I don't know how to explain it. But, but it was a Gmail. It was a at Gmail. The, at the, after the at thing, it was a Gmail? Yeah, no, it was just like, it, it, it was a Gmail. I, I can't explain okay. it. But it's like when you go in it, it's a, you go in through Gmail. Okay, okay. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like you don't go... I don't even know how Gmail works. I still use Hotmail. Like I, I log it. It's it comes in through my Apple, my yeah. stuff. I never knew they. Were, I, I never knew that they could take that shit away. Like it, it, it never crossed my mind they could take it away from me. Because I had some like like some some real um, like childish fucking emails. You know, like I had one um, like OCH says you a bitch at Yahoo.com and shit like that. You know, like I had another one like Oscar Dakuchi or how many other console. When I when I started getting like into like serious things, I'm like I'm not gonna give these childish emails you know i'm gonna i'll use the one that university gave me. dude i don't even have yeah. i don't even have regular email or maybe I, i'm trying to think what if i had one i think my resume it's the lobo 9110 <laughs> stuff dude to yeah. be a, you know i i got that because did you ever have aol chat i don't know you're younger than yeah, me yeah no nah, yeah yeah I, remember. I had it and then i put in lobo 
because my dad's nickname was uh-huh. Lobo, and then uh, and it was like no, and I was like Lobo something, right? And then I put and it's, one of the suggestions was like Lobo ninety one ten, and then I just used that one, and that's when I just started using it. But I, yeah, I still have a Hotmail. People, I don't know, people give you shit for having a Hotmail. No, well, I got I got a Gmail now, so yeah, so I, I had to get Nelly, who has um, been um, extremely patient with me. He's been really cool, dude. Okay, I can nothing to complain about it, to. Go back and do all the twelve clips all over again with different information at the end. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. So you're gonna release what? Uh, uh the full audio. Or so or the, the, the the audio won't release it full. Might might cut one joke off, mm-hmm. maybe two. I'm I'm still I, I I still haven't listened to the audio. No. I seen the video. I seen the video. So, I, but I have not listened to the audio. I, I've been dealing with the video for the past two months. So, I'm finally gonna release. Hopefully, I finally release the first clip. Hopefully, I wanna. So I'm you know trying to think of a good date. I want, I want what was the name of the album? It was uh, Mexican Born, Chicago Raised. Mexican Born, Chicago Raised. Yeah. Okay. And then um, Friday would be the three month anniversary since my album came out. So I'm thinking Friday I'm gonna release my first clip. What did you do after the recording? Huh? Did you do Did you party after the recording? Because I went the, back to well, I went back to the crib. No, um, so I was high. As so I was being sober. I, I was being sober at that time. Oh, you you do sober for when you get back from Mexico for? Uh, so, I, so yeah, so I did three months. And I, I was like in the middle of that when I recorded oh, okay. my album. Um, one of the one of my uh, dudes that I met through comedy, um, Victor Ortiz, his name. He actually gave me a, like a blunt to smoke. And, but I, I didn't oh yeah, yeah, I remember it was a congratulations. Yeah, he gave yeah, you a blunt. He yeah, gave yeah, you a blunt. Yeah. I didn't smoke it for like another two days. So yeah, it was a uh, because I, I was still working the next day and it was a uh, yeah, it was a. Uh, I mean, I was uh, I was pre- I was pretty happy about it. Every, everything went as well as it could have gone. I feel, you know, like I was so high that day because I took half a day. I worked till seven. Right. Yeah. And I was like, your, your recording probably started around eight or something. So I took a half a day. I switched with somebody. So I started like eight to four thirty. And then I was like, let me get some food somewhere before I go. But then I ended up going. I think I went. I was trying to get somewhere I never went to. And I went to like Gene and Jude's, a hot dog place in something. I don't know. I don't know any neighborhoods, dude. And then and then I hit my pen and I'm weak, dude. And I hit it again because I was like, I, I don't know if you ever do this. You hit a pen. You're like, oh, okay, this got me. But I was like, no, you know, it, it, I didn't hit, and you hit again, and then you just, I got way too high, and then I ended up, fucking, I went to eat like four other plates. Man, I was just sitting, I was sitting at the Best Buy, the one you see when you drive on 41, if you're coming from or 94, uh, off the highway, and I was just sitting there in the parking lot. I was just fucking stoned, dude, and I was yeah. scared, and I got to, your, but I calmed down a little bit when I got to your recording, dude. But yeah, dude, I was. The, the the elote guy, stop guy. He was like, he's like, he said something to me. He's like, oh, on this, th-. He's like you're somewhere else, or like I forgot what the term was, but you could tell I was just, <laughs> I was because he's like, I bought a water. He's like, man, you're not gonna take your water. I was like, what? what? Well, oh man, I was, yeah, I was pretty stoned. <laughs> <laughs> that was freaking high. Nah, yeah, I was a, uh, nah, yeah, I was pretty sober. It was a, uh, I got nervous. Like maybe I want to say two days before. Before that, I wasn't nervous at all. And it, and it, but I wasn't nervous about the. The actual jokes, but, you know, I was more nervous about the people. Oh, people showing up, yeah, dude, right? Because yeah. there wasn't a lot of pre-sales, right? Pre- so so the a, last day, or something like that. So it was, uh, yeah. So it was, uh, I want to say, a, a, a week before the album recording, I still only had like twenty, like twenty pre-sales. 20. What, what did it? What did it? It was a and the fifty-two cards it, it, against it, humanity theater or yeah, something. Yeah, how, how many people does it fit? So I think it fits. I think sixty-eight, okay. but I, I put sixty tickets on sale. Mm-hmm. So that, that that that's what I wanted to sell. But I ended up selling fifty-two at the end, which oh. is, so it was decent. You know, it was um, fifty-two is. Did you total or pre-sale or no? Forty-two pre-sales, ten, okay. ten to that. Oh, forty-two. That okay. That gives you some ease. Uh, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. No, yeah. So it was like yeah, the last like five days, people started buying the tickets and. So, uh, yeah. you, you're lucky, man. Yeah, Mexicans, uh, they even bought it pre-sale, dude. Yeah, no, I mean, I wanted people to, I, I wanted to get one pre-sale just because I, I felt like if you have a ticket, you're gonna go. Yeah, if you if you don't have one, then the day of you could. Yeah, ah, I don't feel I'm tired. Yeah, you know, like I, I'm not gonna go. So uh, that's what I was. I, I mean, I was like, I was uh, preparing for the worst case scenario. You know, I just I did a show yesterday in fucking Waukegan <laughs> or Saturday. And then, you know, you have people, I don't know, I have people locally, since I, I don't live in Chicago in the suburbs, there's no comedy up there. They're like, hey, when are you going to do comedy? They're always asking yeah. me. These, these motherfuckers were, it was in this brewery called Zoom Beer, and the back, it, the warehouses where the show is, they were in the front, they were there at the show, and they were they, they just happened to be there drinking, right? And mm-hmm. the, the girl was like, oh my God, Giovanni, you're, uh, I was like, you're going up next, you're going to comedy? I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm going, 
I'm going to go up next. She said, oh, okay. Never. All she had to do, they already, there was a free show. All I had to do was walk to the other room. <laughs> Literally, they already had their drinks. Just walk and sit there. I was the last one, fucking 10 minutes set. Watch there and watch me for 10 minutes. And then not, not, even her boyfriend, who didn't even fucking know me, went in the other, the other room, the chick I went to high school with, and then kind of watched. And I was like, and I was like, you know what? I deleted her the next day on Facebook because I was like, <laughs> look, man, wh- why are you my friend on Facebook, dude? Why are you going to be Because fr- there's people you I still keep on because it's like, okay, they might come to a show. Like, you're not coming. You were there. You had the show. You had to fuck walk 10 steps to watch me. And you can. I was like, man, I was, I was thinking about should I delete her, you know, because she's not going to show. I'm not trying to fuck her. She's not going to show. Why is she my friend on Facebook? I don't know. That's how I feel. I don't know. What? How do you feel? Your high school? Are you? No, I don't. I don't I, 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 I What's up, Greg? Like, sorry. Sorry. Greg, uh, the mic here just came back in. We're just right by the wrap it up. We're about to wrap it up. Nah, I don't. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, like my best friend, my best friend all my life, he's not into stand up. Like, no. So like I kind of get it. Like if you're not into, if you're not into stand up, why force you to go watch yeah. something you don't yeah. want to watch? Yeah. Like he's gone to see me a few times, mm-hmm. and he, he he didn't go to my album recording. He messaged me like, "Yeah, hey, I can't go." I'm like, "Fine, that's fine. You don't even like stand up, Like uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, like I, I would rather people go that want to go. Uh, at the beginning when I first started. It, it was more of a people asking you, and you would get an illusion like, "Oh shit, people are asking. People want to go." Now, I when people ask me, I know that. It's like I a, know, dude. It's funny. It's like, like, when's your next it, show? It, it's like no. a, it's a twenty percent chance that they might go. So you know, I you know, people ask me like, "Hey, what's your next show?" Hey, this is you tell them the next show that you want them to go. Right? You don't tell them your next show. Yeah, no, I this, the, yeah, this is the next show that I want you to Those go. Those are bad shows. I don't want people to go. Yeah, to. and then and then that's it. And then I I, I never expect them to go anymore. Uh, and then I mean. And then most of the people that went to see me, like most of my high school friends that went to see me or most of my friends that went to see me, they went to see me like my first few years. And then it's like, it's, it's hard for me to be like, you know, like explain to them, like I'm way better now. You know, like, yeah, yeah, like I'm, I'm just way better, dude. Like you should come see me now. Like, but then again, uh, I don't know. You know, it's, it. Yeah, dude. Because when you start, when you get excited, you're getting booked. So you're inviting everyone now. Yeah, dude. Now I'm just like, you know what? You're going to come see me? Come see me. Like, that That's it. Now I just put it up. Unless it's going to be like a really good show, a really good lineup, and it's like, man, this is... Or, or maybe I was a producing some, I would maybe... Mess, like, I don't even message people. I used to, like, message... I don't message... I really don't. Now it's like I put it up, and it's like, there, if you want to come, come out. Or, but... But now, I just... The people that annoy me, it's the ones that are always... At, like, now, like, this one chick would always ask me, hey, when's your next show? And then, and then you tell him like, "Oh, actually, uh, uh, tomorrow I got a show. Are you in town?" She's like, "Oh, I don't take it personal no more. People come out, they come out. People don't come out. No. Don't come out. I mean, it, it's not. I wanna. I mean, I wanna entertain people that like stand up. That's why I give it to producers, dude. Even somebody who's starting to show, it's like you're you're getting the people out of here. It's yeah. like, man, it's like you're giving us a venue to perform in front of people because it's, man, when I, it's tough. It's tough to get people out, dude. Especially, uh, I mean, yeah, it's it's it's." It's not easy, man. It's no, not easy. It's, it's, not, it's not, dude. And it's, uh, yeah, I definitely. I mean, if you want to come out, come out. If you don't want to come out, don't come out. I mean, I don't know. I can't. I don't. I, I don't take it personal no more. I stay friends with. I mean, I don't. I, I don't take anything personal. Do you see when when you mm. see people promote or promoting uh like shitty shows? You ever see notice that like somebody's uh like you. you uh, when people are young in it and they they're still bringing like, they're bringing people they're like, promoting an open mic like it's a show, you notice oh man it's and I'm just I don't say nothing now, because of younger comics and they're like, getting people they're getting people they're going over there they're trying to grab people from the bar and bring them to the and I I'm, I just sit there it's like oh don't do this to these poor people like, <laughs> like man dude this is a mic and I, any friend that I come that comes to the mic I tell them like hey this is a mic this is not a show even some of the shows it's like man. You, don't yeah, expect to laugh. The, the thing is that... Um, I tell them, anybody a- wants to come with me. Everybody wants to perform in front of real audience members. Uh, it's a necessary part of growth mm-hmm. as a comedian. But the people who promote open mics or who are newer in the game and book uh, comedians that are not that good yet, they don't know. Like, You know, when, when you're six months in... Oh, yeah, you think you're so much better than you are, you know, dude. And, then, and you see somebody that's a year and a half in... You, 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 you fucking think they're God, you know? And I'm five years in, I could tell you, like, no, this guy in year and a half is decent, but he's not, you know. But when you're six months in, you don't know that. You don't, you don't, no, know, you, you no, don't know. You don't, don't know. know that they're just decent. You think you think they're fucking monsters. You you're like, what? Yeah. He's like, oh, my God, why is he getting booked? I'm so much better. It's like, nah, dude, you're... Like, yeah, there's, there's a lot of things that, that you don't understand when you first start out. Definitely, when I first started, I used to pay attention to... 
nothing but material nothing but material you mm-hmm. know and now i feel like i pay more attention to delivery than material oh yeah because yeah. I, i've heard i heard most of the jokes already you know like Nobody's. Br- I mean, I'm not saying nobody, but 99. Oh, you talk about this, right? I heard you talk about like all the premises are done. Was that you who said that, or what? like there's no new premises? Oh, yeah, I've always said that. I've always said that. Yeah, and, right. And I've always said that everything's been done. Yeah, yeah, the, we the, talked the, about the, this the, before. The, 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 every joke has been done. Um, the only thing you can do is put your own spin to it. Uh-huh. Or, but yeah, every. I mean, and social media is, I think, the best example of this. You know, like. You see people coming up with the same joke over the same. Oh movie. man, when something happens, yeah, like a like, tragedy yeah. or something, no, the remember, news. I remember when um, <sighs> the whole timeline. I, that's why I hate having I comic friends. The, Everybody has the same fucking joke ten times in a row. On my timeline when something for, happens. I remember, for example, the Game when, of Thrones when winner the, thing. I remember when the vice president um, Pence was mm-hmm. kicked out of the theater or what, or now mm-hmm. kicked out of the theater, but the you know, college or something, the, the, right? The, no, the people. Pro- they stay, they, the, they the, left. The, yeah. the actors made it made it clear that they were against his. It's homophobic policies, mm-hmm. whatever. And it was like, everybody made the same, oh, that's not the worst thing that's happened to a president of the theater. Like, the same Lincoln yeah, joke. Yeah, the same you know Lincoln I mean? joke, that's, The same Lincoln joke. And I was like, you know, you people don't understand that, you know, you guys are making the same. Or when it was cold uh, as fuck uh, on the Game of Thrones premiere, yeah. and everybody's like, oh, the winner's coming. Yeah, yeah. Like, so, and it, so it's like, yeah. So if, like, I, every joke has been done. And even the sta- stand-up jokes, only th- the, the, that's the only reason that I don't like doing one-liners, because I feel like they could be a meme like that. You know, like somebody hears it, at a at a show or something, they just make a meme, and then now it's a meme. Now you stole it from them, even though they took it from you. You know what I'm saying? So I know. Th- I've seen memes where it's like I'm thinking, like, who did that? Was that the comic? Because I heard the joke. It's like, was that the comic, or was that? And it's like, I you see them, and then you start thinking, like, did they steal it, or they, or it's parallel thinking? But it's, I don't know. But I don't. There, there's definitely a lot of parallel thinking, and there's definitely this thing where um, non comedians, they don't care about like authorship. They just want to share something funny, you know, like. So I seen this. Um, I think Mexicans. Uh, they they like so this dude I caddy with. They all like tell this. They don't even know that you're not supposed to steal. They're exactly. like, oh yeah, yeah. They don't even know. They're like, yeah, oh, exactly. do this, do that. And I was like, I can't. Yeah, I, no, no, no. Definitely, I seen like um, I definitely seen like memes where comedians have posted. I remember Avi did a meme, and then one of the one of the Bears pages stole it from him without giving him credit, and like he got a lot of comedians to go into that Bears page and like. Oh yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. And, and called them out on it, like, "Hey, you're not giving credit to Avi." And I was like, "Yeah, cool. Like, Avi deserves the credit for writing the meme, but people that don't write jokes don't care about the credit. You know, you you, you just share memes. You just yeah, you, you just, just share memes. You just, you're not. It's it's not important to other people who wrote it. It's not. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, dude. They don't. They don't. They don't, they don't get how like, it yeah, works. Like I remember, yeah, yeah, exactly. They don't understand. Like authorship is not important to them, and I kind of get it. You know, like yeah, like it's only important to us because we're creating content. You know? Yeah, I would definitely hate to see. Have you ever seen somebody steal one of your jokes? No, I never seen anyone steal none of my jokes. But I have seen um, I have seen what do you call it? Like, uh, well, I, I say with the when the Holocaust thing happened, uh, the Holocaust, the, <laughs> the Holocaust thing happened. I, 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 I got the concentration camp joke. Uh, and now the concentration camps are back. Um, we uh, everybody was doing that. Morning. Oh, they always yeah, see yeah, stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 that, yeah. That con- like, oh, people are not concentrating in these camps. Like, man, that's the joke I had. You know, like. Yeah, so that like yeah, I'm like Trump is hurting my jokes now. Like fuck that, dude. Like you know what I'm saying? Like, like I, I don't know, cause it was like it was that, that that was my whole thing. Like everyone's doing a version of the same joke that I did, but I did the Jerry Seinfeld. Um, like no one is concentrating. People, are, you know, what you know, is okay. doing? These Jews. Yeah, yeah, but so I I did a little different, but the punchline was the same. They were playing on the word concentrate. Yeah, which is what I did, playing on the word concentrate. So that that's the only time that I felt like man. That's like really one of my jokes right there. Um, Doesn't Bloom have a? Does he have a concentration camp joke too? Who? Larry. Did he have one too? I'm trying to remember. Nah, he, I think he has one about Gates or something. It sounds like that. Some yeah. some do so. Larry Bloom, Jewish producer. Hey, when I started comedy, did you do the bowling alley when we? Yeah. Back yeah, in yeah, the day, when, yeah, yeah. When Larry first started in Highwood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did yeah. it. I did it a few times. Yeah. Yeah, dude. I fucking. I've seen some. Okay, you know what? I'll leave it. I was gonna see the, the. I was gonna bring this up, but maybe some other time about when you see a comic when they're when they really fucking when they get broken on stage. You know what I mean? <laughs> they're just when they get off. I saw somebody. I'm not gonna say his name. I'll tell you off stage. But I remember he he got broken at the alley, dude. And at different places, I remember seeing it's like they get off. It's like well, it's like they might they might quit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I just look on. I used to uh, look on people's faces where they just fucking. I mean. I remember, I remember the 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 show, the bowling alley. And, uh, Larry actually, 
He gave me a chance to headline one of his shows a few months ago. Where, Magianos? Was it Magianos? It was, uh, I don't remember if it was Magianos or not. It was all these restaurants. They all blend in to me. I don't know. But it was, uh, yeah. But it, it, it was it Italian? Did you see? I, I think Magianos. I don't remember. You know, It was probably Magianos or... Because I did a show. Because it was in the Jewish deli, right? I don't remember. I don't okay. remember. I don't remember what it was. But it, he you drunk? What? It was. A, I think it was a comedy nosh. Oh, okay. I, I think it was a comedy nosh. Yeah, because my cause I, I I did my journals in the comedy nosh like, like a week apart from each other. I headlined one of them, and then um, so I remember Larry. He he actually thought that I did so bad the first time I did the, the bowling alley. He 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 didn't want to have me back. Oh. Yeah. So I now and now he has me headline his show. But the mole was, was a mic, dude. Uh, but he said that I, I that I did so bad that he didn't want to have me back. I mean he. Told me this like years later. Now, now he didn't okay. tell me that at that time. So I remember I did a show and I, I didn't think I did that bad. I like I, I I did as good as any like four month person would do because I was like mm-hmm. four months in. And then the following month I remember hitting him up and he was just like he answered all weird like like I don't know if I have spots and then he oh, for the he, fucking bowling alley mic show bowling. dude. <laughs> The bo- yeah, that happened. That happened to you and Brian Johnson. Yeah, dude. yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, that's because yeah, Brian yeah, Johnson yeah. went out. He's like, he's a fucking pedophile. Yeah, Fuck that. him. <laughs> he's like yeah, Larry Bloom. No, and then, no, and, then, and then and then Larry Bloom eventually messaged me the day of, like, okay, like I'll give you a five minute spot. You can come in. And I was like, all right. Like I was like, this is weird because, this is weird because it's a fucking mic. This is weird. Not only because it's a mic, but it's weird because I didn't feel like I did that bad the first time. Mm-hmm. And then, like years later, he confessed to me that that he he didn't like me at all the first time. That, <laughs> that he, I, I was garbage. That he didn't want to have me back. <laughs> Larry. Yeah, but I'm, I'm cool with him. I'm cool with him, and I appreciate honesty, no. and I appreciate that. Like I said, now now I he let me headline one of his shows now. Five years later, you know, like and then, yeah, he just yeah he just puts me on his any sh- none of the clean <laughs> shows will put me on, but. <laughs> I just, and I don't want to be honestly right now. I don't think I'm that dirty, but I don't want to do anything that's well, too the, clean. The headline I did half an hour clean. Okay. Yeah, I had to do half an hour clean. It was it just, it's weird, and it's always weird doing comedy in front of like older audiences. But it was it was cool. I mean, it was I, I got some laughs. I've done that. Did you ever do Wayne Gunther shows up in Wisconsin? I've, I've never done Wayne Gunther shows. Okay, I did some for like librarians, and I didn't know it was clean <laughs> until it was in Northern <laughs> Wisconsin. It was for like. A, I swear they were like it was for the some charity uh, I forgot those uh, military places ah, I forgot VFW the P- yeah VFW and then I show up and he's like oh it's supposed to be clean Giovanni sorry I forgot and I was like last minute dude when I sit down and I got there and it's like come on dude because it's like I'm stretching out whatever twenty minutes I did have or twenty five I had to do and it's like now you tell me it's clean. but what I did is I just kind of I played on it so that sexing joke instead of saying cock I said like. What you call it? And I, I, because I'm, I told the audience like, oh man, I didn't know it was supposed to be clean until it told me now. So we're gonna just do my jokes and just we're gonna have to edit them <laughs> or something like. And I told them and then they went with it. But it's like, man, it's like, come on, come on, Wayne. Uh, but okay, let's let's start wrapping this thing up. Let's. Wrap. So when's the album? When's the album coming out? Hopefully in September. So hopefully uh, September. Give September. me the name again. Give me the name again. Uh, you say it. Mexican born, Chicago raised. Mexican born, Chicago raised. Mexican yeah. born, Chicago raised. What about social media? Social media. Oscar got jokes on Instagram. All of it together. That's the only thing I promote on social media. No. Comedy wise, I mean Facebook, you know. I mean Facebook I mean it's events. Oscar Cato Face we will on Facebook, Oscar Kutu Cato Have you just wanna hear me rant about soccer. Soccer, <laughs> soccer. Is it what the post the IG is more for the, the comedy stuff? Yeah, the, on Instagram I only post comedy stuff. Yeah. So yeah, so, yeah. so if you wanna follow me on Oscar Got Jokes, you can check out my shows there. Uh I'm gonna start releasing uh clips, hopefully by Friday, August 9th. I don't know when this is gonna be released, so I'm I'm building these up, so uh, hopefully uh, soon, so maybe like in two weeks. August I'm 9th. Getting these out, so maybe it's been out. Or so check out the clip. Um, Oscar Carwell home. Oscar Carwell. All right. So this is Giovanni. Uh, what mm-hmm. is this? The lo- the the, the Lobo Den. It was gonna be Whoop, but there was too many. <laughs> so mine's my same. Sh- it's the same shit. Lobo ninety one ten L O B O nine one one zero for everything. Don't follow me on Snapchat. That's just for me to try to holler at hoes. So <laughs> just Instagram and Facebook, and then that's good. Anything? Anything? Any last things you want to say before you cut this off? That's it, man. All right, man. Gang, gang, 2020. Gang, 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 gang. 2020. There you go.